Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Spurs My NBA series. Today's a shorter episode than usual. Um, we're not really going to do much gameplay or anything in this. We're just going to kind of do a recap of everything that happened in the postseason. Obviously, some big changes happened, most of them for the worse, and we're going to talk about the outfall of those and how we can kind of uh, help the situation out a little bit. And uh, also we're going to address the situation with this team in general. So the first, obviously the worst um, free agency bug we had right there, the center we just traded for, Andre Drummond, went straight to New York, paid him $27 million. We offered him a similar contract, I guess that New York uh, shine kind of uh, impressed him a little more than San Antonio. But the good news is they also have Mitchell Robinson, which if they sign Drummond to a $27 million contract, Mitchell Robinson could be a center that we look to get, whether that's soon or at the trade deadline, because he's fairly easy to trade for in this game. His value is not that great. Um, he's not as happy with the situation now. Obviously, he's not starting. He had 10 points last year, up a little bit from the year before. Um, on pretty good shooting percentage, 67%. I, I love the way he plays. He's a he's a center that's going to run around, get you rebounds, and get you blocks. Not the greatest rebounder, but he's definitely going to get you some blocks. I've, look, his offensive rebound is 91. He's no rebounder like Drummond, but you could definitely build a team around him. And that'd be an interesting trade to see if we could get. The Knicks actually aren't all that bad. They did bring in uh, Goran Dragic as a backup point guard. But that is the most... Uh, important loss this offseason. We really didn't lose anyone else, but this offseason, Andre Drummond leaving kind of broke the plan I had for the upcoming season. Uh, we were going to have him as our starting center. He was going to help us get rebounds, get blocks, play defense, and when everybody else could handle offense. But now, our current starting center is a battle between Jakob Podol and Inez Cantor. And you guys da uh, Comment down below which one you think you should take the spot. We have Podol, who's 26. Uh, we got him for two years. Then we have Cantor, who's 29. We have him for one year. I'm leaning towards Podol just because he's on our team for multiple years. We can develop him a little more since he's 26. But you never know when players are going to start regressing in this game. Um, they have fairly similar games. They're kind of not great offensively but when you look down to the rebounding Cantor's obviously a much better rebounder overall but uh Podol could develop but the rebounding's fairly even the defense is pretty similar overall they're pretty similar players Podol's slightly better at blocking but I, I don't know which one I should start if you guys have any preference let me know we'll just have to go throughout the season and see who ends up playing better Power forward, obviously, DeMar DeRozan starting. We signed him for five more years. Um, locks him up till he's 37, which by then we might want to have him off of this team because he'll probably be horrible. Rudy Gay is a guy that I'm looking to trade. Uh, I feel like um, this new guy we drafted, whatever, however you say his name, Taribo Akwugebu, Aku whatever. I feel like I want to get him and Luka Samanich in the rotation a little more. I did bring Rudy Gay back on a one-year deal, but I think we'd be able to make a nice trade for a quality backup player, maybe even a younger player or a pick to get rid of uh, Rudy Gay. I brought him back because we needed to fill out the roster, and I feel like in real life the Spurs will bring him back. But going over to small forward, we actually have some exciting news here. Devin Vassell jumps Keldon Johnson in the rotation, and Devin Vassell will now be the starting small forward this season. He did not play that great last year. He was on limited minutes. Um, you see here, 7 points. 33% three-point shooting. That's not the greatest, but Keldon Johnson, 9 points on 28%. That's that's In 28 minutes, that's unacceptable. Let's see. Devin Vassell almost averaged the same amount of points in 10 less minutes. So you can only imagine what it would have been like if he was out there on the court more. Uh, Mario Hazonja, we brought him back on a one-year deal. He's just kind of probably won't get much playing time. He's just there to fill out the roster. Um, shooting guard position, like I said, uh, Lonnie Walker's probably going to leave this offseason or at least try to. We'll try to bring him back. He's going to want a lot of money, 
but we will have a lot of money this offseason, so we'll see if we can snag a superstar. Um, but we're set right now at shooting our Derek White for four years. He'll be 31. By the time he's 31, we'll probably have a few championships under our belt. This is a, it's a pretty set spot for us. Much like point guard, we have DeJounte Murray still, Patty Mills, and Trey Jones. That's Point guard and shooting guard and small forward are the same exact positions as last year. Center is the only one that's changed, and even then, it's still a player that we're going to um, be returning from the team last year. And the thing about this season is I want us to be successful this season. I want us to hopefully have a playoff berth. I don't think we win the championship this year. But I would like to at least make the playoffs. And we'll just, um, while we're doing this, we can't see him. We can't see him. We'll just see what trades are like for some of our players. But um, I want to make the playoffs this year. I don't want to go for a high draft pick again. That would be the worst case scenario. Because I feel like that wouldn't be entertaining as a series. Uh, nothing too interesting here. Steven Adams was actually an option. We should have traded for him last year. But... Right now, they have, in the power rankings, each, I believe they have us ranked around 15th, as you see in the right corner on NBA.com. We are at 14th. We should be in the same general area. No, they have us. Were we higher on this one? I can't tell. They have us ranked third. 2K Sports. What is 2K Sports doing? We definitely aren't third. And Eric Bosnick has us ranked 15th. That's interesting. 14th, 15th, and 3rd. That's an interesting spread right there. Like I was saying, they I don't think we win the championship this year. Um, see what Keldon Johnson's value is. But if we do happen to make the playoffs, that'll be great for our progression. Matisse Thibel, pretty good. Um, that'd be a nice stepping stone for us to uh, kind of become a contender in this league again whether we make them this year or not next year in free agency uh i'm definitely gonna try and go after some big names uh let's see well, let's see if i can figure out upcoming free agents this year luka Doncic, obviously would be great to get him but i think he's a dallaser for life kevin durant player option 43 million at 33 he's definitely taking that Steph Curry, he's going to resign with Golden State. Zion Williamson's team option. Bradley Beal, player option. But Bradley Beal is an interesting one because he said he's satisfied. He's not happy with the situation. He is definitely would take a take a better situation there. Jimmy Butler, not a big fan of him in two K. Um, I mean, he's a ninety two overall. But he just doesn't put up the points, really. Our 22 points is pretty good. Um, but for someone that's getting $37 million, I don't think we would go after him. James Harden's probably going to re-sign. And then you get down to these players. But right here, Shea Gilgis-Alexander. 88 overall, 23 years old, on an expiring contract. If he is a free agent, we're signing him. Derek White, we can trade Derek White. We can do anything with Derek White. We're bringing in Shea Gilgis Alexander if we have the opportunity. And then we got all these key players down here that we'll have an opportunity to bring in. And with the money we have next year, if we have two players that we really want to bring in, we could always trade away DeMar DeRozan. That money is not stuck on the books. Um, it's just not the loyal thing to do. But I mean, when it comes to a player like that, does it really matter? Um, like I said, guys, though, this episode is going to be a little bit shorter. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the team and uh, kind of see what the season's going to unfold to be. I, I can't decide which game we're going to play, but we're going to play one of these first few games next episode. And we're, like we did last season, we'll probably play like two or three games. If we're not doing good, I'll skip to the end. If we're doing good and we make the playoffs, I'll probably skip closer to the playoffs. Um, if we're close to the playoffs, I'll play more games, stuff like that. Um, thank you guys so much for following this series. Uh, next episode will be more back to normal, 20 minutes or so. Uh, this episode, I just wanted to do a kind of a postseason, preseason review 
uh, show you guys what the plan is going forward. Thank you guys so much for watching, and adios.